the book of Romans, chapter eight. You know, I you know what I discover. Hardly does Paul preach without reflecting this coming of Christ in almost everything he said. But when we preach today, you don't even see it in, in any sermon at all for the whole year. That's not the way those people preached. Look at verse 18. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. That's the first Adam. All the creation that we see now, the leaves, they are aging, the animals, they are so unfriendly, they defy each other. That's not the way it was, was at the beginning. It was the result of sin. Before the lion will not attack human beings. I watch a, I watch a documentary and ah, I say, look, it's terrible. Somebody went to a zoo and they, they were going inside the car. I watch it on the YouTube. And the lion broke through and drew the man out and killed him there. It was not like that. It was seen that brought mosquito. <laughs> that when the mosquito now bites you, you are having malaria. I know some people in UK who are Nigerian. They are afraid to take their wife to Nigeria because of mosquito. The whole creation was subjected to corruption. Because of the sins of Adam. Can you imagine the, in the kingdom, in the kingdom age, all these things will be done with? Because this, the last Adam is going to, has undone everything on the cross of Calvary. He paid for it. Verse 21. Because the creation itself shall be delivered from the bondage of what? Unto, of corruption unto the glorious liberty of the children of God. Can you see? Talking about the kingdom age here. You see it in Philippians. You see it in Corinthians. You see it in Thessalonians. You see it in Romans. You see it everywhere. And yet we are not hardly hearing it from the pulpit today. So we just go the way of the world. Many people even forget that Jesus will come. There was a pastor, a preacher that was preaching. He said, I don't know. I listened to it. He said, rapture, 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 rapture. It's because you people are poor. That's why you want to go. Do you know I can show you in the book of Corinthians, chapter 15, where it says that if there is no rapture, then let us eat and be merry. Abby? That's prosperity preaching. Right there. We didn't have time to go into all these things. Pro prosperity preachers think that they are enjoying, whereas they are not enjoying. When they say, why do you want to go? I have my own heaven here already. It's not the heaven that we are talking about that we are having. You don't have a personal revelation of the glorious resurrection. That God has promised us in our physical body. And you see people clapping for him. Yeah, yeah. Papa, ride on. They are riding on to hell. Look at the apostles. Verse 23, 22. For we know that the old creation grown it. And travail in pain together until now. Who? Verse 23. This is wonderful. And not only they, but ourselves also, 
which have the first fruit of the spirit what is the first fruit of the spirit the salvation of your soul that's the first fruit is the down payment but at rapture jesus is going to collect the full possession that we have for himself he said and not only they but ourselves also which have the first fruits of the spirit even we ourselves groan within ourselves waiting for what the adoption to wit the redemption of what of our bodies he's talking about the rapture he's talking about the rapture brethren at the rapture we are going to have full redemption all the saints of god are supposed to live our lives as if jesus will come tomorrow as he will come the next second when you get home you can write it down second corinthians chapter 5 do you know it's all about rapture <laughs> when he says, for we know that if our heartly house of this tabernacle were dissolved we have a building of god and house not made with hands eternal in the heavens when you get home, go and read it. I'm just trying to show you that, look, the way the apostles, the way they preach about the rapture, the second coming, the rapture of the saints, it was wonderful. So as you go back into the world, keep this back in your mind, that your best life is still in your future. Amen. The best is yet to come if you are a sinner now here you are enjoying your best now the worst is coming but god has reserved the best to the end for the redeemed and jesus is the person that makes all the difference let's rise up and pray He has done for me. He has done for me. What my mother cannot do. What my parents cannot do. He has done it for me. Oh, hallelujah. He has done for me. 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 What my father cannot do. He has done for me. Any more ages to go by me, Giga. Any more ages to go by me, Giga. Oh, we got the bread and the the reason why you will, you will need to live for God, not for self. All the things of this world, they are passing away. They are passing away. All the shiny, shiny things. This old world is going to face the judgment of God for seven years. 
and God's plan is that you will not be here. I will not be here. I want you to pray and say, God, thank you for your awesome plan. And when we come back with him after the rapture, we are going to be trained in heaven how to rule on the earth. And by the time we come back, we're going to be here for, uh, for 1,000 years. Millennium in Greek means 1,000. 1,000 years. Reign with Christ. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? It should affect every area of our life. This thing, oh, gives us hope. The blessed hope. When you look at sinners that you want to convert, you just pity them now. You don't, you don't want to be like them anymore. You don't want to compromise like them because their destination is different. The vehicle that you are taking is taking you to a different destination. They are going to a different destination. You cannot copy them. You cannot do what they do. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. I want you to pray and say, God, my life is in your hands, so oh. Help me so that the world will not distract me. Help me, oh God, so that the flesh will not pull me down. Help me so that I will not copy the world. Help me to stay focused on Calvary. Help me to live a separated life for your glory. Help me, oh God, make me a soul winner. Help me, oh God, oh God, to, to play my part in the church of the living God. To move the church of God forward. Help me so that I will not go back and be discouraging my pastor. I want you to pray that the Lord will help you. The Lord will help you. The Lord will be your strength. Pray that you will be dynamic in evangelism. Ah, knowing now your destiny. That all these, uh, all these pumps and pig entry that you see now. That you see all around us with sinners has an end. The stone will soon come and smite them. Smite them. And all these things will collapse. Then the kingdom of God will reign over the whole earth. And of the increase of his kingdom, there shall be no end. The Bible says unto us a child is born. That is the first time he came. He came as a child. He came as a man to die. But is he unto us? A son is given when he comes back. Oh, my friend, he will come as the son of God. He came to us as the son of man, but when he's coming at the second time in time, he will come as the son of God. Unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. And of the increase of his kingdom, the Bible said there shall be no end. All the prophets foretold of this glory of God that is awaiting us. I want you to thank God for the resurrection of our body that is coming ahead. Oh, we, are, we that have the first fruit of the Spirit, we groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to win the redemption of our bodies. Hebrews chapter 9 also tells us that when we are saved the first time by sin, is from sin, by his sacrifice, is coming to gather us home, to change our body the second time. To give us full salvation, which he has paid for. Until that, brethren, judgment cannot fall on the earth. We are not meant to be in the judgment, in the tribulation. Because Jesus has been judged for us. We can't go into the great tribulation. The great tribulation is described as the wrath of the Lamb in Revelation chapter 6. How can God uh, pour his wrath upon, upon his, his bride? I want you to know that Daniel said this, this revelation is sure, is certain. The way other, other prophecies were fulfilled, all these ones will also be fulfilled. I want you to pray that the Lord will help you in your Christian journey. As a pastor, pray that you will preach Christ more than ever before. That through you, many will be healed. Many will come to the kingdom of our God. Many will be, will be discipled. Many will be affected. Pray that you will impact your environment, you will impact your office, you will impact your school for Christ. All these problems that we are having now, everything will be over. Everything will be over. When the Savior comes, when the rapture comes, you will not remember all those barrenness, all those, all those problems, all those persecution in your office. Everything will end. 
Oh, everything that has a beginning has an end. I want you to pray. Those of you that are not sure of your salvation, oh, your salvation is a big concern to my heart. If you are here and you are not really sure that if the rapture should take place now, you are going to make it. You need to pray for your salvation now. Ask God to save your soul. Away with sin. Away with boyfriends. Away with girlfriends. Away with all those useless pornography you used to watch on your phone. I want you to pray. All those ungodly friends, you need to cut away from them. You need to do something this morning. You that want to, that you are running around with the husband of another man. Can you pray now and say, God, help me. God, help my this wicked heart. Save me by your grace. Put my name in the book of life. Those of you, you know as we are here, you see a lot of people, some people are just rolling around. As if they are not here for this conference. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, I want you to pray. Not all of us will make heaven. People that are outside of Christ cannot go. If you are in Christ, then you are secure. I want to ask you, are you in Christ? Are you really sure you are born again? We want to make sure that in this conference, nobody goes back without being saved, without being born again, without being washed by the blood of the Lamb, without them being crowned with the life of Christ. When Jesus comes, he will come back with many crowns. Oh, it's going to be a wonderful day. Wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you, righteous Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Everybody stand up on your feet. God forbid that anybody should leave this ground without being born again. They will throw you into the belly of hell. If you miss, if we don't find you when the saints are marching in, Ah, we are going to, to weep for you. Some of you know that the state you are now, that look, there is no hope. Deep down in your heart, you know that things are not just right. The way you left your wife behind, you know. All the things that you have been doing in the office, you know. God is giving you the last chance in this conference this afternoon. He wants you to be sure. Jesus has paid very, very expensive price for your redemption. It's not something you do. It's what God has already done. But if you reject the love of God, it's left for you. If you are here and you have not you are not really sure of your salvation. You are not sure of your relationship with God. You have been seen fishing like Nebuchadnezzar and yet you are not born again. And your dreams come, it's always fulfilled. And you have been building on that. Ah, ah I see vision, my vision always come to pass. That is not a guarantee that you are born again. If you are here, and you want me to pray with you, just please put up your hands wherever you are. This is your last chance in this conference. I don't want to deny you of this great privilege. I want, to I want you to have it. I don't want your blood to be on my hands. I don't want to assume that you have made it. I don't want to assume that all of us are going. You saw the drama. Carelessness. Careless mother-in-laws. Some of you used to be very, very fervent, but persecution has made you to lo lose your fire. Why not come and rededicate your life this afternoon? You've turned your back. Those of you raising up your hand, I want you to come forward.
thank you for listening to our telecast. But are you really sure you are ready for the second coming of Christ? If not, and you do not want to partake of the terrible judgment and the great suffering that will come upon those that are left behind, you need to give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and become one of his ambassadors. If you are willing to do so, I want you to say this prayer after me as you put your hand upon your chest. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your great love for me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross of Calvary for my sins so that I can receive forgiveness in my heart. I open the door of my heart to you today. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. And I pray that you will save my soul and you will help me to follow you to the end of my life. Thank you, Father, for doing so. Thank you because I am now your child. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and Amen.